Number one is to switch on nature sounds. Your brain interprets them as non-threatening noises, which helps reduce your fight or flight response. This lowers your stress levels and helps you become more relaxed for sleep. Number two is to spray your pillow with lavender. Smells can produce both psychological and physiological responses, and a pleasant smell like lavender makes you feel relaxed when your head hits the pillow. Number three, is to drink caffeine-free chamomile tea before bed. One of the main chemical compounds in chamomile are flavonoids. These produce a mild sedative effect by binding to receptors in the brain responsible for inducing sleepiness and decreasing anxiety. Four is to keep your room colder than you might think. 19 degrees Celsius seems to be about the optimal temperature. And five, leave your phone outside of your bedroom and keep a book or Kindle on your bedside table. If you read for just 20 minutes without the blue light of a screen, you'll feel sleepy and sleep much better. I've listened to over 100 podcasts in the last 12 months, and here are my seven favorite podcasts that have changed my life and helped me to grow both myself and my business. Firstly, The Drive by Peter Atia. Next, On Purpose with Jay Shetty. Huberman Lab with Dr. Andrew Huberman. The Predictable Revenue Podcast. Stuff you should know. Hidden Brain, Motivation Daily by Motiversity. Let me know which your favorite podcast is down below. Hold up, did you really just put that on your personal statement? Don't worry, you're not alone. When I was a medical school interviewer, I saw hundreds and hundreds of people make the same mistake, and there's an easy way to spot it. I want to study medicine because of my love of science, my strong desire to help people, and because I enjoy working in a team. But we know this opening sentence is absolute trash, because if you replace the word medicine with pretty much any other science career, the personal statement will still make sense. It's not specific enough, and it doesn't show insight into a career in medicine. So here's how to fix it. Avoid this common study mistake at all costs. People think that reading a textbook or watching a video is a good way to study because it's what they've always done and because they've remembered some information and passed exams using this method before. But it's not the most efficient way to study because it's time consuming and it's passive. But they're not open to trying evidence-based study techniques like active recall because they've closed their minds off to the possibility of new study methods being better. So open your mind and study efficiently. Effective eye contact can make you appear more likable, attentive, attractive, and memorable. Research has shown that eye contact activates the limbic mirror system. This means that the same neurons that are firing in someone's brain will also fire in yours when you share eye contact with them. So if their eyes are communicating happiness, neurons on your end will also fire to feel joy. This sharing of emotional states can help you bond with others and increase empathy between individuals. So during conversations, in meetings with coworkers or clients, remember eye contact. It has a huge amount of power. Power. If you struggle holding eye contact, try this hack to boost your confidence. Instead of looking into people's eyes, try looking at the person's eyebrows. Because of the proximity of the eyebrows to the eyes, other person won't be able to tell the difference in where you're actually focusing. If you're working remotely, you can simulate good eye contact by looking directly into the camera when you speak. Eye contact builds rapport and good social interaction, so give it a try. If you mirror another person's body language, intentionally or not, it's a sign that you're listening to what they're saying. It can instinctively make the other person feel much more comfortable. Cognitive scientists believe these effects occur due to a blurring of the perception of self and others, which leads to a really strong sense of affiliation. Repeating similar language and words back shows that you've heard their words and you're echoing them in your response. You can try using this as a way to connect better with anybody. If you want to make a great first impression, use somebody's name when you meet them. Did you know that the simple act of greeting a person by their name can have powerful and lasting benefits on your personal and business relationships? Using someone's name conveys recognition, respect, and that you've taken the time to acknowledge them. So here are three quick hacks to remember people's names when you meet them. Firstly, during introductions, respond by using their name straight away. For example, great to meet you, Peter. Secondly, it's essential to use the person's name at least twice during your conversation. The more you actually use it in conversation, the easier it will be to remember. And thirdly, if you're not sure about how their name is spelled, ask them at the first interaction. This will help you to visualize their name and get any awkwardness out of the way early. The worst sentence you can get from someone you're selling to is, you could sell anything. You're like the wolf of Wall Street. If someone says this to you on a sales call, it's not a compliment, it's an objection. You know that they're not buying because they feel like they're being sold to. You want the person to feel like you're an expert and that you're offering them value and insights. You're there to help solve their problem with your solution to get the results they want. If they think you're just there to sell, you've already lost. 
Are you guilty of using unnecessarily complex language to explain things? If you use complicated language to try and sound smart, I hate to break it to you, but according to the research, it does the opposite and makes you appear way less intelligent and it also alienates your audience. Instead, try and speak in simple terms. This is what the Feynman Technique teaches. If you can't explain a topic in language a child can understand, you probably don't know it well enough. 